Hello and welcome to MCPSS Athletics. My name is Calvin Chris, Athletic Director of Mobile County Public Schools. In the studio today we have from Blunt High School, Coach Marion Dunn, and the FCA Director for Mobile, Brother Dennis Hafer. But first, let's get to the scoreboard. In boys baseball, Baker lost to Spain part in, in the 6A semifinals 10-1. to Congratulations to the Hornets who finished the season at 26 and 15. Mary Montgomery won the 6A South Regional Softball Tournament in Gulf Shores to advance to the state softball tournament in Montgomery. Baker also earned the second qualifying sport spot. Uh, congratulations and good luck to both of these teams. And that is it for this week's scoreboard. After this message, we'll be back with Coach Dunn. I'm Ashley Rich, Mobile County District Attorney. The failure to obey school bus safety laws will cost you. It can cost you up to a $3,000 fine and the loss of your driving privileges. But more than that, it can cost the life of a child. That's why the Mobile County Public School System is urging you to stop and obey all bus traffic laws. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. For me, it started back in 1942 when my family moved to Mobile and I began my uh, high school career at Murphy High School. Today, it's so important to be able to ingrain in yourself what are you gonna do in future life, and you need to be prepared. And so subsequently, everything at Murphy was very important in my life, and so it, it was instrumental in preparing me for future life and future profession that I wanted to be in. Thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm gonna go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back. Our first guest today is from Blunt High School, Coach Marion Dunn. Coach, we appreciate you coming by today. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Coach, before we get started, you want to tell us a little bit about your career up to this point? Oh, yeah. I've been in the school system probably about 19 years now, primary school teacher, science teacher, uh, basketball coach, uh, assistant basketball coach, now currently athletic director at Blunt High School. Coach, uh, Blunt's always seems like has good teams in just about all their sports. Uh, let's kind of go through the, the season up to this point since we're at the spring. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about, about your football team, which made it to the playoffs? Yes, sir. Uh, I got off the phone talking to Coach Hurt. He's out there working hard now in the weight room and doing drills and things of that nature. Had a great season this past year and in the years before. Uh, one of the highlights has been, of course, you know, the Battle of Pritchard. Uh, this year, I think Blunt beat Viagra for the first time in like 14 years. So that got us jump started. Uh, won the region this year. Uh, had some players sign, go off to college. Uh, right now, the kids are working extremely hard, uh, led by Demetrius Vaughn, who's highly taunted. Um, upcoming season looking forward to it young guys working hard coach the rumor is coach Saban's been by y'all school a couple of times look at some of y'all's kids hasn't he that's true uh, and that's an honor also you know when you go got coach Saban coming by we must have something going on really great over there uh, I think coach Hurst doing a great job getting those young kids uh, ready for the next level and yes he has come by to visit so hopefully we'll have some great things going on this year uh, Coach, then we go into your volleyball season. Uh, uh, you want to talk a little about that? You, you, uh, some of our girls' sports? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say we will have one of the best volleyball coaches, mm -hmm. hardest working volleyball she coaches, uh, Coach Gardner. Uh, she used to be a part of that, that, that Dirty Dozen from McGill, too, and mm -hmm. she has a great, great discipline, work ethic. i uh, got some young girls she's excited about coming in this year. Also, starting to work out after school with her spring. Uh, led this year by um, uh, Kiara Morrell and Mrs. Gay. Uh, again, again, that program is uh, continuing to build. I'm excited about it. And Coach, of course, your basketball season was uh, was very successful. You made it to the finals, and and uh, 
just really didn't play your best game. One of your best players didn't have a, a good ball game, and he was so consistent the whole year. Of course, that, that wasn't the uh, – we can't blame it on him, but yes, it, uh, I, I just thought y'all played your a bad game at the wrong time, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, you know I didn't want to relive that, but since you brought it up, uh, don't want to use any excuses. I'm extremely proud of uh, Coach Pope and his coaching staff and Great those job. kids. Back-to-back uh, -back regional champs. Um, lost twice by three points back-to-back uh, -back to Mount Brook, the eventual uh, state mm -hmm. champions. Uh, those young men uh, played their hearts out, men of character. That's what I thought I saw. Even though things didn't go their way, uh, a lot of times on the court, uh, they continued to play hard. And I thought represented Mobile and the surrounding area really well. So, again, we're excited. Uh, Coach Pope's doing a great job with those group of men uh, building character. And, Coach, you had some kids assigning basketball. I know one's going to Stinson, I believe. Yes, sir. Uh, again, uh, those young men are full of character. Uh, they were led by Divine Miles, who's our floor general. He's signing with Stetson. And uh, man in the middle, Reginald Harbin, he decided to stay home. Although he had several offers, he decided to stay home and, and go to Spring Hill. So we're really excited about those young men. And some others are going off to college also. But those were our character leaders and our on and off the floor leaders. I know Coach Pope does a wonderful job, and, and of course it helps to have you there with, you know, you've had some teams that, that have been to the state. I know back at BC Reigns and all, so y'all have one of the uh, best basketball staffs, I, I believe, in town. I, I, I really believe that. Yes, thank you. Uh, and of course your girls, they, they did wonderful. Oh yeah, Coach, Coach Wilson and his staff, again, Coach Kendrick Cleveland. Uh, also great state, staff. Yeah, great Veteran staff. Veteran people. Lonzo. Uh, Johnson, uh, Coach Cooley, they do a great job with those girls. Uh, they push them to the brink and those girls respond. Uh, Coach, Coach Wilson will be coaching the All-Star team this year and again they right. had their best record uh, in the history of the school, 31-5 and five this year. Um, again back-to-back -back regional champs and they're working hard right now getting prepared for next year. And Coach, he's got some good kids coming back. I know he lost a couple but he had some young kids playing, didn't he? Yes, sir. Sierra Johnson is probably uh, in the top five in the country. Uh, one of the best players I've mm -hmm. ever seen. So we're, we're excited about uh, surrounding some players around her and letting her continue to, to lead that Blunt High School basketball team. And Coach, I had uh, Coach Hawkam on uh, a few weeks ago. I think he's done a wonderful job with the baseball. He's brought a lot of enthusiasm to mm -hmm. it. And I know uh, uh, he, he took over this year uh, from Coach Wilson, and I think Coach Wilson kind of helped him, but, yes, but he's done a good job with it, hasn't he? Coach Hawkham all around, I know his dad. Works was, hard. Well, hard. His dad was a hard worker at Murphy High School, uh, so Coach Hawkham come in and been a great addition to the entire program, football and along with baseball. He's probably out there on the tractor doing the field right mm -hmm. now. And your uh, girls softball? Yeah, girls softball this year also. Growing, we were excited about it. Had a lot of young girls playing, and they have two girls to sign scholarship. They're basketball oh, and, and uh, softball girls, but I think Coach Porter and her staff did a great job. Uh, Miss Etheridge, Coach Etheridge got involved, they helped us out a whole lot, and we were excited about those girls uh, going on to the, into the future. And of course, uh, track, one of my former players, uh, Melvin Jones, who was mm -hmm. probably in my top five students I ever had. He's just an excellent young man yes, and uh, always does a great job. I, I like what he does with track with the Friday night light meets mm -hmm. and uh, he does a lot of extra stuff and, uh, and track had a great year. Yes, sir. Uh, Mrs. Coach Dixon, Coach Cooley, Coach Jones, of course, they do a great job. They work extremely hard with that program. In fact, I saw Coach Jones yesterday at, at church with his mom yesterday, and I told her I was going to get on him, and uh, she told me to make sure I did that. Uh, Coach Dixon and Coach Jones, they do an excellent job with those young kids. In fact, they uh, qualify for state, got some young girls coming back next year that are in the top five in the state. So we're looking forward to a great upcoming year with that track program. Coach, uh Talk a little bit about your facilities out at Blunt. I think y'all just got a beautiful campus, and then you've got a field house, I believe, that's going that, that's there, but it's uh, fixing to be finished. Yes, sir. That field house, and we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to bring a lot more energy toward the, uh, the program. Uh, but the facilities itself, they're already immaculate. I think we have some of the best facilities uh, in the city and as well as the state. And I think the, the coaches do a great job with the maintenance of it also, and that's what we're proud of. 
I, I love going out there looking with it. You've got the track going. Of course, y'all have got people working on the field, and it's just an uh, immaculate campus. It really looks like a, almost like a junior college campus, doesn't it? It does. Those, again, I said those coaches, Coach Hurt, Coach Hawker, the track coaches, anyone that's involved with that, uh, that facility out there, they do an excellent job in the maintenance part of it. So. All right, Coach, we're going to uh, take a break here, and we'll have you back the, at, at the end of uh, this segment. Thank, right, thank you. you. We'll be back after this message. It started for me when I went into the first grade, and then I went on to George Hall Elementary School, and from there to Williamson, where I graduated. The public school system, it had a great impact on me because not only did it prepare me academically for my future career, but it also prepared me for life. Because of its diversity of, of students and teachers, it really gave me a well-rounded education. So, Nicholas, how was your day at school today? It was great. We had fun in class today. So what did you do differently today at school? I mean, anything, any new projects? We got a progress report today. You got your progress reports today? So how did you do? Uh, don't know. You don't know. That's okay. We can check that right here. Wow. Nicholas. This is, this is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Click it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. Basically, Dot, I want you to just push the period. She's going to love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you come. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. Welcome back. In our second segment to hear, uh, today, we've got one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Brother Dennis Hayford from the FCA, and I think your official title is Greater Mobile Director? South Alabama. South Director. Alabama. Okay. Yes, I've graduated. A little broader. Okay, right. that sounds great. Right. You got a promotion. Yes. Uh, we're glad to have you here. And Thank uh, you, our Brother Dennis comes to our uh, AD and head football coaches meeting. He brings so much to uh, our, our meetings and, and – uh, as a voice for all the coaches, we do appreciate what you do for, for all of them. And, oh, uh, wow. And uh, you have a passion for this, and uh, a lot of times people have a job and don't have a passion, but you have a passion for it, and it shows. So well, thank we, you, We Cal. appreciate you. Okay, what's going on with uh, FCA and Mobile? Well, Calvin, we're uh, we're finishing up uh, our school year. You know, as uh, the the main one of the main focuses of our ministry is our campus ministry. So, it's it's my great privilege to go to Theodore High School, Blunt High School, Mary Montgomery High School, and recruit a uh, a huddle coach, someone who will lead the Bible study there uh, on campus, and they then they in turn develop student leaders and. Uh, so as the uh, year goes on from September all the way to May, they're meeting weekly and a great opportunity for kids to come in uh, and, and, and get a spiritual shot in the arm. A lot of kids, parents don't take them to church so they can come to uh, a Mobile County Public School and uh, legislation supports this, uh, either equal access legislation before or after school they can have a Bible study. So great opportunity for us to um, spiritually impact uh, the kids of South Alabama uh, before school. Tell us a little bit about one of the greatest events I think that we have and that's the Senior Bowl Rally and it just gets better and better every year, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah it does, Calvin. I, I, uh, that, that's a, that whole event is a real testament to our, our huddle coaches that I just mentioned because as they're working throughout the year, uh, creating uh, interest in the Bible and in God and in spiritual matters, this event comes along. And I'm also thankful to the, to the Senior Bowl people for allowing mm -hmm. us to partner with them every year. So the Wednesday night before the Senior Bowl, uh, about 2,500 students from all over South Alabama come to the convention center. And I get an opportunity, we have a band and we feed them Chick-fil-A. And uh, then I get a chance to, um, bring over some of the Senior Bowl players who I've been meeting with during the week 
getting to know, learning about their spiritual background. And we do a, a, a sports show where I interview mm -hmm. the players and we talk about football and their faith. And it's pretty, it's such a, it really is, I think it's one of the most spiritually impactful events in South Alabama during the year because we'll have, we'll have 500 kids every year. Calvin make significant decisions for Christ, rededicate their life to, to, uh, to Him. And really it's through the being encouraged by the testimonies of some of these players who are now being drafted. Uh, Jordan Matthews was drafted, the wide receiver from Vanderbilt was one of our main speakers. He was drafted in the second round. Taj Boyd uh, went, I think, in the fifth round, quarterback from Clemson. Uh, Jared Abraderis, wide receiver from Wisconsin, was another kid that was drafted by the Green Bay Packers in the sixth round. So it's neat mm -hmm. for us to hear about their faith and then see them go on to big things at the next level. Brother Dennis, you talk a little about the huddle groups. Uh, what do they, some, what are some of the things they actually do in the huddle groups when they meet? Well, um, a, a huddle group is, is the FCA terminology for Bible study group. Mm -hmm. um, and we are athlete targeted, but we're not athlete exclusive. So you can be in the band, you can be a non-athlete, you can do, uh, as long as you're a student, you can come to the FCA meeting. And what they'll do is they'll have um, our, our huddle coach, the teacher will oversee the development of a student team. A, a president will be elected, vice presidents. And so in that 15 minute meeting or 20 minute meeting before school, you'll have um, the, uh, the welcome, the, uh, the warm up, which is a, 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 a mixer, something to get the kids up and out of their seat. And then the, the workout, which is the Bible study. A lot of times it's led by kids. And sometimes they'll bring in a, a, a coach or a teacher or a youth pastor to, to speak. And then you have the wrap up where they'll take prayer requests and pray for each other. And then their bell rings and they're off to school. But many FCAs at different schools, Calvin, will then in turn, they'll take on a community project. I know the the FCA at Bryant High School has adopted a, uh, a senior adult facility right there mm -hmm. in Bila Battery that they'll, they'll go and serve meals or, or they'll go and read to the right. senior adults and things like that. So the FCA huddle groups not only meet on campus before school, but then they'll also find other ways to be involved in the community as well. Of our 12 high schools, do most of them have FCA, are we in most of the schools? Yeah, we're, we're, in, we're in every school that's except great. one or two. And you know, it comes and goes as a, as a teacher, that's our huddle coach, as they move and leave, then I've got to recruit another one. Mm -hmm. So all of, our, all of our principals are 100% behind FCA, all of our athletic directors. Uh, if, if we don't have an FCA there, it's just because we're, we're in need of a, a, a volunteer there and we haven't identified one yet. Now, do y'all get down into the middle schools? We do. Middle schools are a little tougher, Calvin, in that high school kids are at an age where they're ready to take mm -hmm. on leadership. Middle schoolers, not so much. They're still working through acne and, <laughs> and uh, you know, time management and all that. But we want to be in every high school in Mobile County. So we're still, uh, uh, those are just a little more difficult to develop. Uh, I, w I want you to talk a little bit about one of the best things that I've ever seen. In fact, my son just absolutely loves his, and that's the coach's Bible that y'all give mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, FCA is, is the largest Christian ministry, sports ministry in, in, the, in the nation. And one of the things that we do really well, Calvin, is Bible distribution. We, are, we partner with um, uh, Holman Press and we, we produce our own, our own Bibles that are athlete and coach targeted. So uh, we're the second largest Bible distributor in the nation, second only to Gideon. the Gideons. That's right. We're not, we're not going to catch <laughs> them. But, uh, but we distribute a lot of Bibles and the coach's Bible that, that we have is really neat. It's uh, it, man, it, it it looks manly, it looks <laughs> athletic, uh, and and in the back of the Bible there are devotions written by coaches, FCA staff, that um, give you a devotion to read 365 days a year. So that's what I find a lot of coaches like. Whenever I, it, it really 
encourages me when I go into one of our coaches' offices and I see their coaches' Bible sitting out. You know, they use it for, you know, guidance in everyday life choices and decisions. But they've got that devotion in the back that gives you a little track to run on as you, um, as you set aside time with the Lord every day. It gives you a little devotion you can read that'll encourage you. I think it's one of the best things y'all do. And, and to see the kids, uh, they'll be carrying them and they'll make sure that coaches is showing on that Bible. You yeah, know, they're, they're so right. proud of. That's right. Okay, Brother Dennis, we're going to bring uh, Coach Dunn back here in our last segment. And, uh, and I've got a couple more questions I want to ask you. Good. Look forward we'll be, to it. We'll be right back after this message. I transferred to Biger High School halfway through my sophomore year, and the curriculum there, the instructors, teachers, uh, the whole thing was just a shock to me. Uh, at Viger, um, you were encouraged to critically think, and so uh, I was just uh, well grounded to move on into college football and then on into the NFL. Well, for me, Viger High School was the start. It's where I started, and I'm very proud of that. Nationwide, an average of 24 children die each year. And another 17,000 are injured in bus-related accidents. Many of these can be prevented. The safety of our children comes first. For the safety of our future, obey all traffic laws related to school bus safety. Hi, I'm Pat Mitchell, Director of Transportation for the Mobile County Public School System. We're asking you to obey all bus safety laws. It could save a life. Remember, stop ahead when you see red. Our future depends on it. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Welcome back to our last segment. We brought Coach Dunn in, and I've got both of them here, and we've got a couple more questions we want to ask. Uh, Coach Dunn, people sometimes think that our athletic directors, it was just something that we added on to give the football coaches extra money and of course we've got football coaches that are athletic directors but you are just an athletic director without being a football coach and people don't realize the effort that goes into it with the c2c go through some of the things that that you're involved with and it is quite time consuming isn't it exactly uh in fact it I never ends does it exactly in fact i did not know uh, but my wife granted me permission to accept the job, <laughs> and uh, it is a full-time job. In fact, uh, if you are a football coach and athletic director, I don't it's really tough. see how you do it. It's tough. Uh, especially with the new program, the C2C mm -hmm. that's involved right now, which is computer-based. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be uploaded into the computer now. So it's a, it's a full-time job. Uh, Brother Dennis, what are some of the events you've got coming up this summer? I, I know summer's still a busy time mm -hmm. for FCA. Well, before we do that, let me brag on Coach Dunn. Not only is he his plate full uh, as the athletic director, but he's our huddle coach at, at mm -hmm. Blunt High School. And uh, when he accepted that job, one of the first things he did was he called me and said, Dennis, I, I need you to come out here and uh, let's get a Bible, a coach's Bible, for each one of our coaches. So we had a great time mm -hmm. uh, getting found us a sponsor and getting out mm -hmm. there and got a, got a Bible for each of, uh, each of the Blunt uh, coaching staff. Calvin, we have a, we, have, we do have a busy summer planned. We, we've uh, I, I love our partnership with the University of South Alabama. Coach Jones is wonderful to uh, give us the opportunity to partner with them in their seven on seven camps. June nineteenth, we have our uh, next level camp, which is kind of the brainchild of Fred Riley. He and I, six or seven years ago, were looking for something to to do in the summer that would include not only the skill players in seven on seven skills the skill guys get a lot of stuff to do in the summer big big linemen they don't have much to do in the summer but this uh, this next level camp that we do is wonderful Calvin school football teams from all over South Alabama come to the University of South Alabama and we do lineman events in seven on seven so and then we also have the privilege of bringing in a, um, a, a guest speaker who's an athlete and a believer and he gets to share Christ with uh, the players and, 
in our summer camps, we always have uh, a couple of hundred kids uh, accept Christ there mm -hmm. at the summer camp. So what a neat opportunity we have uh, with them through the Joey Jones football camps. Mm -hmm. Coach Dunn, uh, talk a little bit about your school, Blunt High School. Uh, advertise for them right now. Well, uh, before I got out there, I was I probably back at BC Rain, that was one of my arch rivals there. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't think they would really be Many heated to, battles yeah, with them, wasn't Many it? heated <laughs> battles. Uh, and so all, I knew it from the outside. Uh, but once I got there, I realized that, okay, uh, the alumni, and it's, it's a big family. Very active, they, they really, are. They're really active lot. out there. They love their school. They love that community. And then once you're in there, they embrace you and they continue to support you. So uh, Mr. Woods and his staff, Mr. Lang, Ms. Hollins and Ms. Brown, they do an excellent job, you know, toting that ship out there. And Coach, we hear this all the time, but really, once a leopard, always a leopard at Blunt, right? Once a leopard, <laughs> always a leopard. I was a panther for Murphy High School. I think they've accepted me since I was in, in the feline category, so I think I'm in there now. <laughs> uh, that's good. Uh, Brother Dennis, if someone wanted to start a chapter, say uh, middle school coaches out there right now, what, what would he have to do to get that started? Yeah, Calvin, that, that's great. So uh, all you middle school coaches out there that are, that are believers in <laughs> Mobile County High School, uh, call me. You can go to our website at southalabamafca.org and fill out what we call an MLA, a ministry leader application. That's our, uh, our, our national um, uh, application, Calvin, we, we, get a, we get a background check on you, we, we check references, so we make sure we get the right man or woman to lead that huddle there at that school. But it's a 15-minute it's a, it's a process, you fill that application out, it comes to me, I look it over, I'll call you, we'll follow up, I'll come and train you, give you all the resources you need, uh, but that, that would really be, if you're looking for a way to make an eternal impact on your school campus, that's the way to do it. Also, Brother Dennis, we are, and, and the reason I'm asking this question is because you mentioned something to me one time. You thanked me for letting you come to our, our uh, coaches meetings because in parts of the United States, that's not allowed, is it? Yeah, not that's right. We, uh, we're, we're really blessed in, in South Alabama to have um, men and women who, who, are, who are courageous enough mm -hmm. to still allow God in the schools. There's mm -hmm. lots of legislation on the books that, that protects us. It, you, you know, it's gotta be, uh, it, it's gotta be voluntary. Mm -hmm. And you know, like we do with the coaches meeting, we wrap up the AD meeting and then we have FCA. So it's not mandatory, mm -hmm. uh, but it just takes um, uh, a, a principal, a teacher, uh, an administrator, who says, you know, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do it the right way. And, and we really, FCA, we serve at the privilege of the, the school mm -hmm. system, whether it's the principal or the head coach or the, or the administrator who gives us that opportunity. And we agree to partner with you to make sure that we don't, we're not gonna do anything outside of the, the legal boundaries mm -hmm. that, would, uh, that would get us in trouble legally. So there's lots of, lots of good, um, legislation on the books that allows God to be in our schools mm -hmm. and in our administrative meetings, um, and uh, we're happy to do it. Thank y'all so much. Coach Dunn, continued success. Brother Dennis, appreciate all that you did. My pleasure, Calvin. Thank Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching today, and we'll see you next week.